We're Susan and Mel Finlay, National Directors of Nation at Prayer. This is an exciting month as together we explore Canada from sea to sea to sea. We hear from leaders right across the country and discover how each one of us can impact our nation through prayer. Today we're talking with Clement Chartier, President of the Métis National Council, who joins us now by phone. Welcome, President Chartier. Uh, yes, uh, welcome uh, to you both as well, uh, Mel, Susan. The decade of the Métis Nation was launched last year, ending in 2020. What are some of the things you're celebrating that you would like other Canadians to know about? Well, each year we pick a theme. Uh, <clears throat> last year it was honoring our Métis Nation veterans, and we honored both our World War II veterans and uh, Korean veterans. This year we're celebrating our Métis nation culture and language, and we'll be working to bring our elders and youth together to discuss uh, issues, including the residential schools, and uh, hopefully that uh, our communities will also get involved. And we will be using also the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal uh, to present to those Métis who have contributed to the uh, Métis culture uh, and language and to Canada generally. President, those are exciting initiatives. What would you describe as the three or four key challenges facing, facing the Métis Nation right now? Well, basically, <clears throat> the lack of a land base certainly is a big challenge to us. Uh, we were dispossessed uh, by federal government action uh, in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, we also have uh, a lack of fiscal resources to resolve these land issues in the courts uh, because we do not have a land claim process in place for us, as do uh, First Nations and Inuit. And of course, the federal government's abdication of jurisdiction and responsibility for the Métis uh, is another problem. And of course, a major problem for us is exclusion from the Indian Residential School Settlement Agreement of 2008, uh, the government's June 2008 uh, apology, I should say, and also exclusion from the mandate of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. So I think those are, are big problems for us uh, to date. Uh, for the Métis boarding schools, no church or government uh, has accepted responsibility for what happened to uh, us in those Métis residential schools. With those challenges, leadership can be challenging. What are the two or three key challenges you as leader face? Well, basically, you know, one of the biggest challenges is that, uh, you know, the inability to be able to find the fiscal resources to address some of our key critical issues, uh, such as, you know, a land base. Uh, we are currently in the courts, but, uh, you know, it's hard to, to find the resources to, you know, carry them forward uh, successfully. Again, the federal government has not, you know, provided us loans or grants as they have to uh, other Aboriginal peoples. So that's big. Uh, another big problem is educating the Canadian public and also government in some cases about the uniqueness of the Métis Nation, that we're a distinct Aboriginal people uh, with distinct rights who sometimes get lost under this umbrella, uh, Aboriginal peoples. And, and a lot of people don't understand that the Métis Nation is largely Western Canadian base with a long history, uh, you know, a distinct cultural language and uh, great contributions, uh, you know, to Canada in the past, particularly with the building up the economy in Western Canada in the, in the 1800s. You had a, uh, the Métis pe people had a major role to play in uh, the development of the West, didn't you? Uh, yes, a tremendous uh, role uh, through provisioning, uh, you know, pemmican to the fur trade, acting as freighters, uh, yeah. acting as, you know, trappers, suppliers. So, yeah, there, there was a, a huge role that was played by the, the yeah. Métis Nation. And, in fact, uh, because of action of the Métis Nation, uh, Western Canada is still part of, well, Canada as opposed to, you know, the United States. There basically was a choice. And, of course, the Métis Nation uh, in 1870 through the Manitoba Act uh, brought the West into confederation. So, yes, the Métis did play a major uh, role in development of Canada. Just uh, very quickly, President Chartier, uh, as Christians, we believe strongly in the power of prayer. Are there two or three things that you would like uh, Canadians to be praying for the Métis people? 
Well, I, I think uh, people could pray that uh, the federal government, uh, you know, assumes its jurisdiction and responsibility for the Métis as it does for First Nations and Inuit people, that the federal government uh, provides a land claims process uh, for the Métis. If they claim that our rights have been extinguished, well, let's have an opportunity to, to revisit that and hopefully look at the restoration of a land base to the Métis as, you know, any nation or any people, you know, have the right to a land base. And with that, of course, we'd be able to become, you know, more contributing uh, members of Canadian society through resource development and uh, taxation and so forth. So I think those are the main things that I, I would think, uh, you know, could be, uh, you know, devoted to in, in terms of prayers for the Métis Nation. Thank you so much for your time, President Chartier. You've uh, opened opportunities for many of us. We will be in prayer right across the nation for your people. God bless you, and thank you very much. Yes, thank you.